Hello, my name is Karen Phillip and what I'd like to speak to you today briefly on is sharing a story with your children. And I'm take, talking more for the, the younger children, sort of the under fives. Now I don't want to speak about reading a story to your child at night, which of course is a wonderful thing to do, a, a really great way to share with your child and also to have your child settle down and calm at the end of the day where a parent sits there with their child, reads them a nice, calm story, and simply allows them to drift off to sleep. That's great, and everyone hopefully will be doing, doing that every evening. But what I'm speaking about today is sharing a story with your child, engaging with your child. Now that can apply whether you're a parent, or even a preschool teacher, or an infant school teacher. I have seen so many teachers trying to read a story to the children and they just lose their interest. And all they do is they seem to pick up a book and go page after page after page. And half the time the children sitting over there can't really see what the story is about. They can hear it, but they need the visual impact. So what I'm speaking about today is talking to the children about the story, engaging the children in a story, sharing the story with the child. Stories can take a child anywhere. They can expand their world to absolutely anywhere. And that is what I want parents as well as teachers to do with their young children. Now, there are so many things that a book and a story can teach our kids. They, it enhances their imagination. We can ask them things like, what happens next in the story? What do you think may happen? Who might do this and what character might do that? So it gets the children thinking and talking and interacting with the story. Then we can go on and ask about the, the story at the end, about what happened and their comprehension, what they understood occurred in the story and, and how the story unfolded. And these are all skills that children need to learn. It's not an automatic knowledge for them. It's something that we as parents and teachers need to develop and teach our children to comprehend a story and how the story unfolds. Now the other thing is, as we go through the story in each page, what might happen next? What do you think can happen? And also raise their awareness of what's actually going on in the story as we read it. What is here? What is there? What do you see? What does that mean? All of these things are so important. So if you're a parent and you're reading your child a story in the afternoon, after an activity or even on a, on a rainy day. Sit down with the child and go through the story. If you're a teacher engaging the class or engaging a few children, then we need to, to go through all that as a group. And we need to also find out what it is that the, that the characters in the story felt in that story and what the children feel and what they understand. So if we have a book, and I just picked up one called Guess What? Now this is a book that we can hold up to a class or even to our child at home and say, what, what do you think it's about? And let them tell you. Well, they can see a, a picture of a person and some fingers and, and a moon and some clouds, but what do you think might happen in the story? What else do you see on the page? And let them go through and explore the page. Then you might turn over the, this is not the first part of the book, but uh, it's about a, a crazy lady. So her name is obviously Daisy O'Grady, so I should have started at the beginning, but that's all right. Um, so guess what is the name of the story? And it just states, far away from here lives a crazy lady called Daisy O'Grady. Is she tall and thin? It question asks. So we need to go through it with our child in a little bit of an animated way. And here's a picture. Now, what is the picture about? What can the child see in that picture? Have them explain it to you, the child or even the group of children. What can they see? Well, there's some grass here and there's a house and there's a road. What else do they see in the picture? So we go through that as well. And then we get back to tall and thin. What does tall mean? Now, if you're a parent at home reading the story, who's tall in our house? Is mummy tall? Is daddy tall? Are you tall? And then talk about size. Thin, what does thin mean? And let the child explain to you what thin means. Now there's a picture there and it says guess. Now they may say, oh, those legs are skinny 
or they're thin and you talk about that as well. Yes, does she wear a long black dress? Guess. So the words yes and guess are repeated actually in this story. So the children, the little children will learn that that word and those symbols mean the word yes and that is the word guess. So it is being rep repetitious. And when they're young, repetition is actually really good for children to start learning about words and symbols. Now, we can go on and read the book, but I won't need to do that now. Uh, and again, yes, is she fond of animals? And you can talk about the animals. If it's a school situation in a preschool room, talk about all the animals and the sounds that they make. If it's at home, you can talk about the animals that you have and the animals next door and so on and so forth. So there's so much that you can do in a story instead of just reading the story. And that is what I want you to build with your children as an experience for them to love books, love stories and want more and more. Thank you.